that it was it was definitely a different experience. It was the first time that I lived away from home, away from my family. Um, and but I was still because I was brought up in a church. I still went to church, and actually my dorm room was literally right across the street from the church where I attended. And so I said, oh, this is perfect. I just walk across the street, whether it's snowing or raining or sweeting or anything like that. So I didn't lose that part. You know, some I know some kids go away from college or leave home, and then you know they were raised in church, going to church with their families, and they leave their home and they say, okay, well I don't have to go anymore. I'm off the clock, basically. <laughs> but I'm glad that I was still, you know, let me let me just stay in church, even though I'm still not not paying attention to what they're saying. I'm not actually doing what the Bible says. I even have a Bible at that time still. But um, but the Lord still had me under His wing, and I and I didn't even know that. Wow, wow. The beautiful thing about being on the beach is that you can see what God designed just for us. You know the waves and the ocean and even the salty taste. He didn't do it out of obedience. He did it because he wanted to do that for us. So tell me what you're doing now and why do you want to do it? Well, now what I'm doing is sort of spirit ministry. Uh, that's the name of my prayer ministry that the Lord gave me probably about seven years ago um, when I first came out of religion and relationship. I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, get in the prayer room. I said, okay. And people said, oh, you're going to be a prayer warrior, an intercessor. And I had no idea what that was. <laughs> But I said, okay, and so it was in the prayer room that I learned his word. It was at a prayer retreat that he gave me the name Sword of the Spirit Ministries. That is the word of God, the Sword of the Spirit. And because I didn't have his word for the first 30 years of my life, literally, even though I had church on Sunday, I did not have his word. Um, so I fell in love with his word, and so that name, Sword of the Spirit Ministries, was perfect for me. And so I've been sending out monthly newsletters, just encouragement from the Word, just any topic that's going on in the world, anything that people need just for hope. And so just last year, the Lord told me to make uh, Sword of Spirit Ministries a nonprofit. And I said again, okay, uh, I don't know what you want me to do with this, Lord. What is, why, why do you need it to be a nonprofit now? What do you want me to do? And then the Lord just started sending me different places, different uh, ministries, different missions, just different places out in the community where I could see that there was a need for certain things and I kept saying, oh, that's what my ministry's for. Okay, that's what my ministry's for. Um, and being a single mother, that's, that's my heart. I have a great compassion for, for women in general, but definitely single mothers. Um, and I just know that there's a great need because what I need is food stamps and WIC and a you know, free bus pass and free uh, health insurance. Um, that was there for me, um, and even though it, it, it was a, wasn't a handout, you know, some people just need assistance, and that's what it was for me. I was working, but I just needed help, so there's just people out there that just need help, not a handout, just, hey, help me do this, or, or give me the information that I need to make this happen for myself. So there's just so many things that uh, the Lord has opened my eyes about for this nonprofit, so I'm looking forward to helping people in the community. Wonderful, wonderful. DJ Shaheen on the track. Do you want to learn how to pray effectively? Discover for yourself a strategy for establishing the promises of God in your life. Charlene C. Thomas is a published author, inspirational speaker, and professional editor. But above all, she is a trained intercessor. As the founder of Sword of the Spirit Ministries, Charlene has created Take Up Thy Sword, a monthly newsletter with hope and encouragement from the Bible. This newsletter led to the devotional and journals entitled Prayer Plus Encouragement Equals Power. In 2013, Charlene was named Author of the Year at the Orlando Newsom Awards, and she has written three books thus far in an ongoing series of prayer guides. Her newest release, I See What You're Saying, follows When Heaven Hears Your Prayer and How Great Is Your Faith. You can find all of these anointed products and much more 
at TakeUpThySword.com and other online retailers such as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million. If you need help with resumes, proofreading, or book publishing, these services are also available via Spirit of Excellence Writing and Editing. Contact Charlene directly at 321-209-2309 with any questions or comments. That's 321-209-2309. Remember, God heard your prayer. Now you need to learn how to get the answer. DJ Shaheem on the track. I know that the sun is out and we're enjoying it. I know, I know, I know. That's okay. And I, Lord. I, I, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just disturbing you because oh, no. it's just so much activity <laughs> out here. The cars are going by and yep. the families are under the tent, but... Tell me some more about why the nonprofit needs to help single mothers. Okay. I think I was a single mother longer than I was married. I've uh, wow. been married more than once, unfortunately, but the Lord is good, so I think it's what I'm doing this time. Um, so I know what I needed um, when I was a single mother. I know how lonely I was. Um, how depressed I was, literally suicidal, um, drinking, um, literally crying myself to sleep almost every night, um, wondering why I, I was so in love, and what my daughter needed. You know, she was a, a single, the only child, so she really, she needed kids to play with. I mean, I would take her to You're talking a about like this. taking your daughter to the beach and just having fun times with her. Tell me some more about that. Right. I remember I would take her to a Newport Beach in Rhode Island and similar to this, go over a beautiful bridge and stand on the beautiful beach, rocks and things to do, a little play area for children. And I would just sit on a bench and be depressed and say, okay, go play. And she would go off and play by herself and I would kind of look like, wow, that doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It didn't seem right. You know, this is supposed to be a family place. Where's the father? Where's Father, single fathers crying 
said they can't see their children or, you know, they're having issues with the mother or trying to figure out visitation. So I would like to, to even help single fathers do that. So the Lord is just really just showing me all these little different departments where you have to write down, okay, what did you mean when you were a single mother? Or how did you feel at, when you were a single mother? And what, what do you wish you had? Because I wish I had a babysitter. You know, I was up in Rhode Island by myself. I didn't have family. All my friends graduated college. They went back home to New York or North Carolina. So I was there by myself. I was kind of stuck. You know, even a simple thing like dating, I didn't have regular dates. I didn't have anybody come to my house, pick me up, take me out of dinner and to a movie and bring me home because I had a child and I didn't have a babysitter. So I was like, okay, well, you can come visit me and then we all got to go somewhere. So let's go and check the cheese. And what kind of date is that? You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm trying to get married again, but... You know, I'm kind of, I have to, you know, and that's, you know, my daughter comes first, so it, she has to be taken care of, but uh, I think that there's a lot of single parents out there that just, they just need freedom, so I want to create an atmosphere of freedom, plus you're getting whatever you need, even, but even your want, okay, it's nice to have, okay, I need this, I need that, that's great, but you have want, the Lord said, I will give you the desires of your heart, so what do you want, and I want a pedicure, okay, well, come on in, there's a spa on the back, hey, I, I I want my hair done tomorrow. Hey, okay, there's a hair size in the back. And I know people that will even come, you know, and donate. I, I'm not trying to have the women come in and pay $50 to get their hair done. I want them to come in and just be blessed. DJ Shaheen on the track. When the storms of life are raging, Sometimes we have to be broken down so that we can be rebuilt into what we're actually meant to be. When the struggle to climb becomes just too heavy, and when God's voice becomes silent in your ear, just hold on because a queen is about to emerge. The new book by the Queen Bee is entitled Last Week I Wanted to Die, published by True Soul Publishing, an umbrella for survivors. The revealing story of suicide, pain, and depression. The Queen Bee Angie B has emerged as a business owner, ministry leader, and a faithful child of God. This story is just the beginning. Last week I wanted to die. On sale now at thequeenbee.com. Do you know how to pray the word, walk by faith, and speak life, whether times are good or bad? Visit TakeUpThySword.com to purchase When Heaven Hears Your Prayer, How Great Is Your Faith, and I See What You're Saying. All of these power pack books are available for under $10. For more information, contact Charlene C. Thomas at 321-209-2309. DJ Shaheen on the track. Charlene, we're, we're doing a, a, a new TV show together. A reality of sorts, because we're going to be sharing the reality of people and mothers and some fathers and some kids. So what's going to make this show different than I I any other show that reflects the goodness and mercy and grace of the Lord? The Lord has um, planted in my spirit to do a show about testimony. Ooh. Um, because we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Um, I love to tell people my testimony because most of the people don't believe me. <laughs> I say, oh yeah, I used to drink all the time and club all the time and curse like a drunken, you know, you know what, and just, you know, and people go, no, not you, you're so nice, you're so sweet, you're in ministry. Yeah, everybody's an ex-something, that's what, you know, one of my pastors used to say. Um, so we all have a testimony, we all have a story. Um, I'm, you know, I'm an author as well as an editor, and a lot of my clients have written about their story. And I have sat at the computer literally and cried, trying to edit, you know, reading these people's stories, and I'm going, how are they still alive? How are they still in 
their right mind uh, the things that people have gone through. These are God's people. These are people that are now pastors and ministers and, you know, have uh, real life ministries and testimonies. And a lot of people have just, the Lord has brought them through so much. And I have a good friend that told me, you know, what you go through is who you're called to. And so this show is just going to basically just show just the power of God, of His Word, um, because the sword of the Spirit ministry, that's, you know, the sword, that word that, that cuts, you know, deeper than just a, you know, just, just a flesh wound, that, that sword goes deep into your spirit. And it's the Word of God that saved me and delivered me from everything that I was uh, bound by. So everybody has that testimony, and that's what brings hope to other people. Because if we're talking, I, you know, I've, I've been abused by my husband for five years, and, and you were abused, but you got out of that relationship, and you were healed, and now you're whole, and now you can uh, bring joy to other people. I need to talk to you, so I need to hear your story, so I can have hope, you know, and the, the testimony of Jesus Christ, that, that, that's the word of prophecy. That's the life that we have to speak, you know, call forth those things which be not as though they were. So I think that this show is, will be very powerful. The Lord has had me, even just recently, just in the midst of women, just maybe two or three women, and we're just talking and just sharing our testimonies, and I'm just sitting around looking like, this just needs to be a TV show. <laughs> you know, there's so many reality shows out there that really aren't reality, but this is real life. What we live, our testimonies, the things that we've gone through, things that people have gone through in their past that are still affecting them now. Okay, I can, I can show you that because uh, I was raised in a broken home where my father, you know, was just a weekend father because my parents were divorced when I was small. I can show you how that uh, translated to now I'm, I'm dating people and that I shouldn't be dating or marrying people that shouldn't be marrying looking for that father figure or looking for that love from a man that I didn't get because my father wasn't in the home. And that's something that happened, you know, 30, 30, 40 years ago, but it still affected me for years, for years and years and years. And that's what's happening to a, a lot of people. We go through things, the enemy tries to attack you when you're this high and tries to, to steal that joy and tries to, to steal that gift that the Lord has put in you and steal that joy really from you so that you don't want to tell anybody about it maybe or to share that. But I love to share my testimony because the Lord brought me out of it. And so I know that that's a powerful thing. So when people see on TV live somebody saying, hey, I tried to kill myself, you know, one, two, three times, but okay, something's wrong with this picture. Obviously the hand of the Lord was upon you. And people need to know that God is there, that there is hope. So this is not just going to be a show just for Christians or just for, for anybody. Anybody can be encouraged just by hope uh, from somebody else's testimony.
Hello everyone, welcome to today's rendition of Video News. My name is Andy B, and I'm really excited about being your reporter for today. Yeah. 